A-T-L, let's hunt. GTA faithful, my people. You know I'm gonna get on for our state and our city. I rip for my state and I rip for my city. Lord to the end, ain't no bandwagon, and no need to pretend to his ones in the bands. Red and black all day, and you know we ready. We ready. ATL, let's hunt, we ready. We ready. ATL, let's hunt, we ready. We ready. ATL, let's hunt, we ready. We ready. ATL, let's hunt. It's time. A T L G A faithful, my people. I am the Douglas Carter back on the scene doing my thing, and I just want to say I appreciate you and the work that you do. Real quick, before we get into the Atlanta Falcons, let me just give a rundown real quick on our other sports teams. Antopolis continues to work his magic, and the Braves doing their thing. The Hawks last night fell to the heat in overtime. They're up by five right now as I'm making this video against the Hornets. Last game, Atlanta United played against the Chicago Fire. They won three to nothing. And you know, Georgia Bulldog season about to get underway with the, uh, the spring training and whatnot. Now, on to our Atlanta Falcons. We're gonna touch on a couple things here. You know, I, I'm okay with the free agent moves that we've made thus far. James, um, Smith Williams, some extra depth on our defensive line. Cornerbacks, Kevin King, and uh, was it Hamilton, some more depth at the corner position. I'm cool with that. Um, I did see that the Houston Texans released Maje Sanders, um, like a hybrid edge outside linebacker from um, the Cincinnati team. I think he was drafted in 21. Um, hasn't, you know, made the impact that he wanted to yet, but the Falcons could possibly sign Majay Sanders, if they like him, to get some more depth at that edge position. I would be cool with that. I thought he was a good player in college. Maybe he just needs a change of scenery. Although he was drafted to Arizona, went to Houston. He just hasn't ha hasn't found his footing yet, but it's a name to watch out for to maybe add some depth on our edge. Um, linebacker, you know, uh, room, whatever you want to say. Maje Sanders, I wouldn't mind bringing him in, cheap sign and get some depth there. And then I would feel a lot better about our defense if I knew we were getting Bud Dupree back and if we were getting Calais Campbell back. I, I, I'd feel a lot better. I hope both of them come back. You never know how it's going to go. And now let's move our, our shift, our conversation towards the draft. Um, I might throw a mock draft in here real quick at the end. Um, also, Atlanta Falcons players have been doing some number swaps. I'll throw that in there and, and let y'all know the new numbers so when we go to training camp, uh, we can pick out these players and make sure we, we know the right numbers with the right players. Um, but as far as the draft goes, I've seen it to where Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Drake May, and McCarthy all go um, in the top eight. You know what I'm saying? So that's four quarterbacks. And then the three top wide receivers, uh, Harrison Jr., Neighbors, and Odunz, Odunze, however you want to say it. Um, and then it would be us at eight. Now, it looks like Dallas Turner is probably going to be available. Um, sometimes... Odunze is available. Sometimes Joe Alt is available. And then in a lot of these mocks, I see uh, Penix fall into the second round. And I want to know y'all's thoughts on if Penix does fall to the second round, do you think the Falcons should take him? I I've done a couple mocks and I, I think, you know, 
it could be a scenario where, you know, Jimmy Lake came from Washington. If Odunze is there, we might take him at eight and, and, and see if we can get Penix. That way we're win now mode. Odunze can come in and, and be on the other side of London and Penix can learn and sit from Cousins. And we're also planning for the future. That way we can just continue winning, which is what I like about that move. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't be mad if we got Dallas Turner at eight. I do like Jared Verse. I'm not as high on Latu, but some people are, and I wouldn't be mad at Latu. Um, I do like Darius Robinson. Um, he's projected to go at the end of the first, beginning of the second. There's a chance he might would fall to the second where we could get Darius Robinson out of Missouri. I really like him as like a traditional defensive end, um, but he does have that hybrid ability in him. Uh, Chris Braswell. Outside linebacker from Alabama, um, you know, he's an effort player. Uh, he had a lot of sacks. He had a lot of production, but he's not as highly touted as uh, Dallas Turner. And then you got another Alabama prospect um, for more interior defensive line, but he could play an end in the 3-4 scheme is, is a, a Bogby. Um, you got... Some other edges out there from Penn State, uh, Isaac and Robinson, I believe. I'm not, I'm not too high on either one of them. Um, you got Braylon Trice from Washington, who I like. So watch that name. We, we might go Braylon Trice in the in the second or third, maybe. Um, cornerbacks, you know, I think we'll address that in the draft. But the question is, I mean, would you be mad if we took? What if what if Malik Neighbors was there at eight? Or what if by some some um, shift in the universe or something happens and Marvin Harrison Jr. is there at eight? Would you be cool if we took Marvin Harrison Jr. at eight? Or Malik Neighbors at eight? Or Dunze at eight? Would you be, I, I did see a mock scenario where the Titans took Dallas Turner and he wasn't there at eight. Um, would you be cool if that's the case, if we took Joe Alt, if Joe Alt was there and get the best offensive tackle in this draft class, I would be okay with that. It just, it depends on who's available and, and how you wanna add. We know Terry Fontenot goes with best player available and tries to fit it with a need as well. So, if you have Malik Neighbors graded over Dallas Turner and Malik Neighbors is there, do you take him and get another wide receiver? I would. And then I'd try to address edge maybe in the second or third round. There is some steals like a Jonah Ellis. He's more of an outside linebacker, but um, I wouldn't mind getting some more depth there. Um, you know, defensive tackle is another position. You got Fisk. I think Tavondre Sweat is out now. Uh, I heard Smitty talking about it. You know, he got a, a DWI or something like that. I don't think the Falcons would uh, take a gamble on that, but I do believe in second chances. Everybody makes mistakes. I wouldn't be mad if we if we took him in the third or fourth round if he, if his stock falls that far. But there is some other guys, like I mentioned, Brandon Fisk. And um, let's see, who else is a defensive interior that I, that I wouldn't mind? They got Hall out of uh, Ohio State. Um, Leonard uh, Williams, I believe, out of Miami, but that's like a boomer bust right there. Um, you got Byron Murphy, um, but I think he'll be gone possibly in the first round, maybe sliding to the second. Um, Chris Jenkins out of Michigan, I really like him. Like if you could get him in the third round um, because I, I think he can play the zero tech and then I think he can bump outside to a traditional defensive end. Um, but I just I just wonder what y'all thoughts are. Do you think we get a quarterback in this draft? I like maybe an option of getting Jordan Travis in the later rounds, a quarterback from Florida State. Um, it just, there's a lot of positions that I'd be okay with, and there's a lot of players that I've looked at, I scouted. I, I looked into the corners really big. I looked into the safeties really big. And um, 
we can really round out this roster and make our Atlanta Falcons a really heavy defender in the NFC South and in the playoffs. As long as Cousins comes back, hits the ground running, his injury isn't messing with him, um, he shouldn't have to learn a totally new language. The offense is something that he's that he's used to, uh, similar to what he was running. And I think he's really going to be able to use pits and use our weapons. Our offensive line is in pretty good shape, but we, we still need to add some depth there. Um, yeah, so what, what would y'all do? What do y'all think? Do you think we would take one of those top three receivers if they're at eight? Now, the trade back scenario is also there, but you have to have a trade partner. And I would be cool with the trade back scenario because you could trade back a little bit and still get a verse or a lot to, or possibly a Dallas Turner, just depending on what other teams think. You know, Darius Robinson is still there. I wouldn't be mad at that. Get some extra picks to, to get some more depth on this team. You know, some corners that I like, TJ Tampa, DJ James, uh, Kyrie Jackson, uh, Jalen Simpson and Pritchett. Uh, the three corners out of Auburn that have pretty high grades. Max Melton, I like him. Uh, Cam Hart, he's a, you know, I wouldn't be mad at that. Um, and then safeties, you know, you got Bishop and, and Bullock and Bullard and um, uh, Hicks. Jaden Hicks, I really like like him as a safety. You got Mustafa out of Wake Forest. There's a there's a lot of talent, and you can find it everywhere in this draft. You know what I'm saying? You just you got to hit on the players that you take. Anyway, that's what I wanted to touch on in this video. Would you be mad if we took a receiver at eight? Would you be mad at a trade back? Do you absolutely have to have an edge? in your, in your um, first round, or, or can you hit in the later rounds on your edge and, and get some more um, talent to go on the offensive side in the early rounds? So those are my thoughts. I am gonna throw a mock in here and uh, I'll touch on the the jerseys, the, the new numbers anyway. Um, so let me start this mock by saying I'm using the mock draft simulator right here. Um, some of the players are, are graded different on, on different mocks, but no trade back because a trade back is really not likely to happen. There is a small possibility of it. And like I said before, I'd be cool with it, but we're staying packed with the picks that we got. And I tried to pick players that I think could be there in those slots. So at number eight... Romo Dunze was there, Washington ties, great wide receiver, technician, smooth, fast, in and out of breaks, good hands. Add him with Drake London, and I'm good. Now, Darius Robinson, the edge out of Missouri, happened to fall to us right here at 43, so I had to address the edge and get our traditional defensive end at 74. The hard-hitting safety out of Georgia. You know I got to represent UGA. Javon Bullard. I'll take him as a safety right there at that pick. Now, Patrick Paul, offensive tackle out of Houston. A big guy. Can be serviceable depth uh, that could transition into a starter. Um, Kyrie Jackson, corner out of Oregon. Uh, I like this corner. He might fall this far because he does have some um, technical stuff to work on but I like his size and athleticism if he falls here I would definitely consider him with our pick at 109 then you get Javon Solomon edge out of Troy which is more like an outside linebacker had a lot of production um, his senior year or his last year he played in college a lot of sacks Add him to our, our linebacker room, our outside linebacker core. Then I did get Jordan Travis because I do want a, a, a quarterback to sit and learn. And I really like Jordan Travis. I think he did big things at Florida State. He had the injury, but hopefully he'll, he'll heal up and, and we could get him in the later rounds. And I'd be, I feel really good about that pick. And then just to round it out, at, at our last pick, 197, Christian Boyd could be a sleeper. 
defensive line, more of an interior guy out of northern Iowa. High effort, has some stuff to clean up. Maybe not the most athletic, but uh, another effort player. And a solid steal right there at the end of the draft, in my opinion. Uh, I didn't cover up the grades on purpose. I really don't care about the grades. Um, but most of these players were A's. I think there was one B, maybe. Javon Solomon maybe got a B plus or something, or or Christian Boyd did. No. But I think they all got A's for the most part where they were slotted and where I took them. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this draft. Would you be cool with the draft like this? I'd be ecstatic with the draft like this. I'd feel really good about a roster with a draft like this. Um, yeah, so that's what I got on the mock draft. I'm going to throw in those number swaps uh, on our team. And then uh, I'll holler at y'all later. So we got Lakel London switching to number 94. Kevin King wearing 32. Antonio Hamilton wearing 33. Ray Ray McLeod switching from 14 to 34. DeMarco Hellams switching from 37 to 23. And Clark Phillips switching from 34 to 22. I'm going to end this video like I end all my videos. Thank God works. And I hope you have a blessed rest of your day or night. Boy.